In 2020, during COVID-19 outbreak, I stayed at home for the whole year without school because my home country, Swatini, couldn't afford technologies to aid in online learning. Whilst developed countries like the United States of America closed schools for only eight weeks because they could afford to use an agent-based model to simulate communities across the U.S., including their primary and secondary schools, <clears throat> in order to quantify the relative health outcomes of reopening schools. This made me realize how underdeveloped Eswatini was. However, it is not just Eswatini facing this underdeveloping issue, but a majority of African countries. From that moment, I started yearning for a prosperous and first rate status in Africa. In the next 12 minutes, I'll be talking about creating the Africa we want. My hope is that you walk out of this talk with an idea of how we can collaboratively bring economic advancement to the African continent. Before we get into how to develop Africa, let's talk about why are we still here. Foremost, colonialism. Modern age colonialism severely affects Africa's economic growth and development. Policies of colonialism forced Africa to rely on imported goods because natural resources were being drawn away and exploited by wealthy Western nations. Africa struggling to economically recover from colonialism is further offset by the political turmoil that brings insecurity in the form of political terror, which is a stumbling block to the economic growth and development. For instance, South Africa accounts for almost half of Africa's gold production, but because they have high level of political instability, they have a GDP data quality of just C as of 2022. Secondly, it is because of rapid population growth that Africa is underdeveloped. Due to a high bed rate, Africa is overpopulated, and this is a direct cause of poverty, leading to a majority of Africans receiving poor quality education and others none at all. Inaccessibility of transportation and cost of education only compounds this issue. This causes a chain leading to slow economic growth. There will be a high proportion of unskilled laborers producing so many low-quality final products that will be sold cheaply in the markets, leading to slow economic growth. More than 3 million children in Somalia are out of school. And even when some other children make it to school, they are barely able to fully benefit from the education fully because classrooms are overcrowded, trained teachers and school books are hard to find. On top of this, inequalities in health also contribute to the underdevelopment in Africa. Health disparities continue to rise in the continent due to socioeconomic factors like expensive health care and unhygienic living conditions. This means that diseases will spread quickly and people will be left untreated. An unhealthy nation means that many people will be without jobs, there will be less production and no income for those unemployed the economy is most likely to go into a recession. So now, how do we turn the prosperous Africa we want into a reality? What needs to be done to develop Africa? Peace and security are at the top of the list. In the context of post-colonial Africa, both internal and, secu and external security are crucial consideration in the pursuit of development alternatives. This is because Africa's development impacts can be hugely attributed to the internal political terror since the Cold War. We need a reinvention of the philosophical foundation of the state in Africa. This calls for a transition from a military state to a developmental, developmental state. We must use our effort to curb the internal conflict, and while the individual may seem insignificant, adopting cultural relativism skills may help. Lots of commotion in Africa is caused by the misunderstanding and intolerance. While not excusing anything, Africans and all global citizens need to tolerate other people's cultures and understand that the decisions they make are informed by those cult cultures. Diversity mustn't be a source of argument. Instead, it should foster engagement between people of different backgrounds, cultures, and traditions. Moreover, African states need to ensure that a high-quality education is accessible to all. Increased access to education is, is believed to be a highly essential component of prosperous nations. Just like in Denmark, there's a whooping 99% literacy rate, and it is amongst the number one developed countries in the world. You see the correlation? 
Although correlation is not causation, in this case it is. Mathematicians would disagree, but that's not why we're here. Educated individuals are more likely to get high paying jobs and they are more equipped with skills necessary to thrive in a competitive world. This may include business know how, which plays a pivotal role in making economies prosperous and flourishing. To try and improve the literacy rate in Africa, folks like you and I can try and make an effort to donate or volunteer to non profit making organizations in Africa with an aim to improve education in rural areas in the continent. Furthermore, a more involved state is very essential to achieve economic advancement. Experiences of successful Asian countries like Japan, Korea, and Singapore have proved beyond doubt that the states play a central role in guiding and promoting successful economic transformation. These countries achieve deep structural transformation of their economies and sustain growth over three decades through a discipline planning approach or a developmental state approach. For African countries to effectively transform their economies, they need to plan the process of formulating relevant economic and social development strategies and implement them. Have you ever thought of what local businesses could do to aid a development in Africa? Well, worry no more. They can invest in research and development to create new products and services that address local needs and challenges. They can also adopt sustainable practices such as reducing waste and greenhouse gas emissions to improve their environmental performance and contribute to the broader development goals of their communities. Of course, what businesses can do is not limited to what I've just said. And this is not distant from us. We can support local businesses by buying from them instead of importing. Buying those sneakers from a local business instead of Amazon could boost the economy to great lengths. Think about it. In France, about two-thirds of the consumers are more than ready to pay more for a Made in France label. How cool is that? Now, look at Malaysia. A country that used to have the primary sector as the mainstay of the economy, just like Africa, natural resources, languages, agriculture, and religion had a great impact on the, on the country's economic position. Malaysian growth story depicts a transformation of a predominant agricultural economy to being an industrialized economy, and then in the latter 1990s to being a more knowledge-based economy. A knowledge-based economy is the basis to sustain a rapid rate of economic growth and enhance international competitiveness. This is to achieve Vision 2020, which is an ideal launched in 1991 and state that the nation must be a fully self-sufficient industrialized economy by the year 2020. If Malaysia and Japan did it, why would Africa fail? Evidently, a state, businesses, individuals collectively play a vital role in making economies prosperous and high income in a period of three decades or less. The good news is, in response to the call of development in Africa, the African Union set up Agenda 2063 in 2013. Agenda 2063 is Africa's development blueprint to, in to achieve inclusive and sustainable social economic development by the year 2063. It builds on and seeks to accelerate existing and past continental initiatives for growth and sustainable development. It has seven aspirations, all of which have been broken down into palatable goals and priority areas. Agenda 2063 and the Sustainable Development Goals both aim to promote economic growth, eliminate poverty and inequality, and protect the environment. To promote sustainable development and social progress, people should educate themselves about these goals and take practical steps. This includes take supporting initiatives that aim to promote and achieve SDGs, engaging in community activities and advocacy efforts, holding governments and businesses accountable. By taking these steps, individuals can contribute to a more equitable and sustainable future, creating a brighter future for Africa and ensuring that Agenda 2063 becomes a reality. Let's not define Africa by hindrances. We mustn't let our continent be a victim anymore. We should, not, we should also be careful of not letting Africa be a charity case. Instead, let's recognize the greatness that still lies within. This is not an issue to be approached with white saver complex. We must see that all the efforts being undertaken 
by local communities and by people who best understand the issues at hand and work to empower those efforts. We should also collaboratively support Africa's economic advancement and not save her from anything. Africa has a tremendous potential to grow and become great. Let's choose to see the greatness and light from the continent. I invite each one of you today to take a step back and think about what you as an individual could do to aid economic advancement in Africa. Let's cooperate and redefine the continent. In ending, I can say the challenge of meaningful development persists and it may take over three decades like it did in Singapore, Malaysia, and Japan. But above everything, Africa will get to be developed and reach the first rate status only if she becomes a development-oriented continent. Success or failure of this depends on the contribution of each one of us here today. An African proverb once said, if you want to go fast, go alone. But if you want to go far, go together. Together we can. Together we can redefine Africa. Thank you.